Area number two, not understanding the critical role of brain biology. There's a great book out there, whoops, by Rita Carter called Mapping the Mind. It's a layman's book on how the human mind works. If you look in the book, what she talks about is research by Roger Sperry, who won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1981. And if you ever took high school biology, you probably recall this. Brain has two hemispheres, the right and the left hemisphere. Lemis left hemisphere does all the logical and numerical processing. Thinks in terms of fairness. Everything is processed by the left hemisphere in terms of fairness. Money is processed and analyzed by this hemisphere because it's numerical. The right hemisphere controls emotions and motivation. It thinks holistically. It doesn't think logically. It thinks holistically. Generates emotional energy for, for performance. Symbolism and recognition is processed here. It's the reason we say this. Compensation is your left brain strategy and recognition is your right brain strategy. Now, here's what's interesting. The more tangible the communication vehicle, the more it's processed by the left hemisphere. This is done unconsciously and unavoidable. The worst offender is cash. I'll give you an example. Um, you've got a service recognition program at Chris Hansen. Okay. Imagine you have a new accountant come in and he says, you know, I'm looking at the budget line item here and I got an idea. You know, we're going to take the amount of money we spend in that particular recognition program <laughs> and we're going to convert the thing over to a check for every employee. So we're going to give them a check for the, whatever we would have expended on that recognition. Okay, and let's just say the organization spends $100 when someone reaches 10 years of service with the organization. So we're going to give the person a check for $100 instead of whatever <coughs> else we do. Here's the way the check gets processed. It's going to get processed totally by the left hemisphere. Example I use is this, you know, guy's trying to figure out how to recognize his wife over the holidays and she loves to shop at Marshall Field. So I'm going to break the budget this year. I'm going to get her a gift certificate for $1,000. So he gets her a gift certificate for $1,000. Her five-year-old wants to, you know, recognize mom at Christmas, so she makes a finger painting and, you know, in preschool and Christmas comes or the holidays come and they present these, these holiday gifts to her. You know, he gets a peck on the cheek, never hears about the gift certificate again. She opens up the finger painting, breaks in the tears, goes out and hangs it on the refrigerator and every neighbor who comes for the next year gets dragged to the, to the kitchen and every time she tells a story about receiving this, she breaks in the tears. Okay. One of them got to her right brain, the other one got to her left brain. And it had nothing to do with the budget. One spent a thousand dollars and the other spent some paper and finger paint. The more tangible, the more must be spent because of the impact of the fairness effect in the workplace. Studies have shown that cash has to approach 15% of annual income. 5 to 15% is the figure. Now, the first time I saw that, I thought, 5 to 15%, where are they coming up with that number? Then I thought about something I told every single person that ever reported to me on the first day they came to work for me. Got good news and bad news for you. Let's start out with the bad news. You're always going to be underpaid. Here's the good news. We're all underpaid. <laughs> CEO's underpaid. I'm underpaid. You're going to be underpaid. We're all underpaid. Okay, why is that? Here's the reason why. There's your performance. There's your compensation. And here's what I'll call the salary lag. Have any of you ever had anybody turn down a raise? <laughs> oh no, my compensation already matches my performance. I'm sorry, I'm not taking that, okay? <laughs> the reality is our salary always lags our performance. And as managers, one of the things we're trying to do is just try and keep that. I mean, we're watching what people are doing to make sure that you know, we try and get that compensation as fair as we can based on their performance and so forth. But the reality is it's always gonna be that lag. So, when you want to pay someone a dollar and the only thing that you want that dollar to do is communicate, you better first of all have paid them everything they th their left brain says, you know what, <coughs> I've already earned this. I don't get any message other than the fact they're paying me what I've earned. That's the problem with trying to use cash for, for, for recognition of any type.
What the experts say about cash, using cash is worse than no recognition at all. I can tell you what, if Amy said, came to me and said, hey, we're going to convert our service recognition program over to cash, I'd say, Amy, just don't do it. It's the one place where people will throw money back in your face. Except that very large amounts, cash will demotivate when used for recognition. Here's an example of throwing it back in your face. Anybody know what that is? Anybody? Anybody hasn't seen it already? <laughs> Congressional Medal of Honor. Kind of a long standing. <laughs> okay, now you're sitting on your hands the rest of the presentation. <laughs> long standing. <laughs> Wait, a minute, I've sat through this. I can tell you what the next answer is. <laughs> How long has that been around? Anybody want to take a stab? Revolutionary War. I think it's 18 or 1782. Okay. Government pays 200 bucks for that. Hey, listen, thanks for jumping on that grenade uh, in Iraq <laughs> and losing two limbs and saving those nine guys. Here's 200 bucks from your country. We really appreciated it. <laughs> By the way, it's here in the Rose Garden, so I guess that makes all the difference to you. Just violating brain biology. Look at the impact on the return, if you will of what they're trying to do. Brain biology is the reason why certain recognition and communication efforts can end up actually demotivating people. That's just that point. That's one of the barriers. Understanding brain, brain biology. <coughs> Said differently, without an understanding of brain biology, managers will pr predominantly be left brain because we are so coached in left brain behavioralism. Barrier number, whoops, excuse me. And you know what we're really talking about today? We're talking about how do we, in the future, become whole brain managers? Because we are just really couched right now in a left brain approach and view of the workplace. That's one of the major points here. Number four, be careful about what you ask. What do you want? I'm going to use it again just because it's a program that everybody's, everybody's got. If I went out right now and I surveyed 25 employees at any company in Milwaukee and said, hey, as an example, okay, again, I'm just going to use an example. You're going to hit an anniversary next year with the organization. What do you want to receive from the company in recognition of your anniversary? What would be the number one answer? Anybody. Number one answer would be this. The number two answer would be this. Now, we just looked at how those are two very inefficient communication vehicles because they're both compensation. So the question is this. If it's so important, why can't we just determine how to do this stuff better with surveys? In other words, why can't we just ask employees what they want? Here's the answer. What's the operative word in all of Maslow's research there? Okay. Yeah. And what Maslow said is this. There's a difference between wants and needs. He said, wants are those transient left brain desires that provide only short-term gratification and only temporary behavior change when met. Needs, deep-seated right brain requirements that re provide long-term satisfaction and most importantly, affect people at the attitudinal level. If you're an insomniac like I can be at times, he's off the TV now, but you know, Tony Robbins used to have his, his <coughs> info commercials on his books and stuff. And what he said is, if you want to change results in your life, change your behaviors. If you want to change your behaviors, change your attitudes. So anytime you can impact people to attitudinal level, you get a tremendous amount of downstream performance is the reality. Real life example, how many of you know a 16 year old boy anywhere in your life? relative, neighbor, relative, uh, you know, cousin, nephew. Grandmother dies and leaves him $3,000. What's he want to do with it? Icon. Icon. <laughs> Here's why Bill Gates is so rich is because uh, he's got this reading the audience's mind. What should he do with it? Save for college. Save it for college. Okay. I don't have one of these, so I'd probably want one of these. Maybe. What should I be doing with it? No. 
<laughs> I saved it for college. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to remind me, okay, because I know that's not happening, okay? <laughs> you walk a six-year-old into a grocery store, you put a quarter in their hand, what are they going to do? What should they do? Well, the example I use is, uh, you know, the day the six-year-old looks up at their mom and says, geez, I was just over in the vegetable aisle pricing apples and, <laughs> you know. Is a day she just kind of keels over right there. If you ask employees, what do you want, this is what they're going to answer. They're never going to answer in these terms. Oops. Jumped ahead there. Let me just. You can measure employee engagement with surveys. In other words, you can say, are you happy here at Chris Hansen? You can measure if they're engaged, but you can't figure out how to fix it with surveys. Example I use is people don't walk into their psychiatrist or therapist's office and say, hey, doc, am I happy or unhappy? <laughs> no, they walk in and say, I'm unhappy, which is a right brain state, and my logical left brain can't figure out why I have this lingering unhappiness. Okay? My left brain can understand why my right brain isn't happy. Said differently, you can't have effective right brain strategies by asking employees left brain questions. <laughs>